everybody, Mark Spec the Comics, and I'm back. This time, I want to do a preview for this weekend's Bruno and Company Auctioneers um, Comics, Toys, and Sports Auction. If you guys are interested in seeing some of the, you know, the highlights during the uh, weekend's auction, stay tuned for that intro. Alright, so if you haven't already, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell notification so that when you do get out, when I do put out some content, you get in a timely fashion. So I like to do these from time to time, especially when it's um, an auction house um, close to me. Well, obviously, back home, I'm away from home, but you know what I mean. So uh, they're doing another one of the uh, monthly auctions here at Bruno & Company Auctioneers. And... Um, Told a few people about this already, and I think I ha might have one of my buddies who uh, might actually go there this weekend and participate live. So we'll see. Um, if you guys need some help registering, have any questions about you know participating in an auction house, feel free to reach out. I'm pretty uh, pretty helpful when it comes to doing these because I've done these you know participate in these auctions many times before. Goal would be to one day, you know, participate in one of these live, which would be pretty fun. All right, so I'm going to just move this over a little bit. Here we go. Um, and I'm going to, you know, just show you some of the uh, auctions. It's a big, it's a big lot. It's 427 lot, as you can see here. Um, and uh, I'm going to, I think there's 180-ish comics. And then it, it starts off with comics, and then it goes into the, uh, I believe, cards, and I think some toys and stuff like that. So um, this auction is actually pretty cool because there's a variety of comic eras, all the way starting from Golden Age all the way to modern. So um, it's great for all uh, comic collectors. So uh, I'm going to point out some of the cool books. Um, you do have the opportunity to pre-bid ahead of time say if you just can't make it to the auction i believe it's saturday morning it starts at like i think 10 a.m eastern um if i'm not mistaken and it goes all day just because it's 400 lots so uh, if you're not familiar with the format it's a little different than ebay it's basically there's no like last second timer it's whoever bids the most at the end ends up winning that specific lot so that's the big difference from an auction house compared to ebay and um so let's start off with some of the books i'm gonna like i said it's about 180 ish books i'm gonna go through this fairly quickly just to save some time all right so starting off it's all alphabetical alphabetical order you guys so obviously you're gonna get your action comics first and there is some pretty early stuff here you can see there's one here from um 1950s action 144 and you can see somebody's already bid and there's, uh, they do put like entry bids. It's kind of like to protect the actual seller. So, uh, and they do put some estimates, as you can see here, what they expect to sell it for. I think that's more like a protection to the seller to have an estimate of what it will sell for. Obviously, they'll sometimes sell for well higher than that. I've seen, like for example, last month I did a, I did a high sale report on the werewolf by night number one cgc 9.8 i think the estimate was like four to six thousand ended up selling for a, a record high price of forty thousand dollars which is insane so that just shows you that the estimates are not always you know what they expect to sell it for um so let's go through these fairly quickly just to show you some of the variety that the uh, auction house is providing and you can always, if you have books, you can sell it to them as well. They'll, they'll gl gladly put it up on their auctions because they're doing auctions all the time. So um, let's see here. There's an Action Comics 200, which is uh, still Golden Age. Um, and they, they do notate everything on here, you know, per census, 2 and 5, 0, 14 higher, which is nice. It gives you an idea if you're not familiar with the book already. Is a cool book right here. First appearance of Brainiac. It's a low grade, but still a pretty desirable book. 
and uh, it says estimate two to three hundred. I can assure you it's going <laughs> to sell for much higher than that. Same with this uh, 252 right here, first uh, Supergirl. It'll sell for more than 500. I, I would expect that as well. It's already a bit at 150. So the like I said, the pre bids you can bid and have a high bid. And when it comes to live auction, if nobody bids above it, you'll end up winning. Here's your amazing Spider Man's. You got some early Spider Man's here too, as early as uh, issue nine. All low grades, and uh, including this one right here, Spider Man 14, Green Goblin first appearance at a 3.0. That's going to be a nice, as you can see here, starting bid at $900. So they, that's going to be, you know, what the starting bid is. And if nobody bids $900, it just becomes a pass. No, no, it won't be an actual purchase. So that's the bare minimum that that, you know, it's basically the reserve. Um, and some of these books, especially, you know, some of these really pricey books on here, like that one, for example, you don't want to start at $50. <laughs> so I, I completely understand that. Um, some other ASM keys. And uh, actually, let me uh, filter this out a little bit to 96. I can probably get this in like two pages. All right. Let me bring me back here. Let's just scroll down here pretty quickly. Here's a nice copy of 6 5 uh, First Punisher. I think that one will do pretty well. As, I think it'll probably hit right around 2000. But we'll see. These are just my. Uh, pre-auction guesstimates we'll do a recap obviously like i did in my uh, last month some of like the books that stood out for me so some of these books i do keep a close eye on there will be books i will be watching um closely to see and if it's something i you know when it goes live when that specific lot goes up if if it's a decent price i will you know often bid on it and you know if it surpasses the price I don't feel comfortable with, I won't chase it because there's always another time. And that's how, you know, it's a word of advice when you're doing these auctions. You can easily get caught up in the uh, excitement of the auction and then you can easily overpay. So that's, you know, something you got to have a, you got to have a limit of what you're willing to spend because there's, like I said, in this auction is 180 comics. So there's a lot of variety if you can't get that one book you're looking for. And that's how I was able to get my uh, Team MT1 third printing from here last month. Um, it just happened to fall up at the right time, and it was a good price, so I bought it. Um, let's see, it's a nice little Batman 251. That's always a fun book for uh, Bron Bronze Age to collect. A little too low for me. I, I don't usually buy six O's for Bronze Age. That's just me, personal you know, preference. Bronze Age, I usually get seven O's or higher. For the very few exceptions, you know, of like the really high, you know, grail books for each era, those that you can, you know, get by on that. But for your average book, average key, I always tend to do seven O or better for uh, Bronze Age. Uh, I got some Golden Age books here, some Blue Beetle. This is from uh, Fox. Uh, let's see. Uh, Syndicate Blue Beetle. This is an early one, 1943. There actually is three copies here. Um, ones are restored. And uh, the other two are blue labels, which is pretty cool. Very few in the census. You know, so uh, just gives you an idea how scarce these books are. Here's a nice, uh, good spec book. First appearance of Sam Wilson. He's obviously going to be in the next Captain America movie. Um something to potentially look for uh <laughs> as your uh, big cult following here for your dark Horse fans dark Horse number one 9.8 it'd be interesting to see what that book goes for um is a nice key uh first appearance of batgirl this is uh tech 359 and that's a that's a you know strong grade an 8.0 this is this is going to be a pricey book i'm definitely going to be looking at that book let's see what it sells for 
Uh, there's some good Fantastic Four keys here. There's the first Frightful Four, first Medusa. You got first uh, Silver Surfer and Galactus, along with uh, issue 49 and 50. So you could potentially get the whole the whole set here if you wanted. There's some good Fantastic Four keys right here. First uh, him, classic Hulk thing uh, battle. Scrolling down is a nice. Um, First Kid Flash. And uh, the classic Zoom. Professor Zoom with the uh, Flash Race. This is a great cover. It's actually a pretty good, you know, four row is a nice grade. Uh, that's usually my bare minimum as well for Silver Age. Uh, is four row or higher just my personal preference when it comes to silver age I won't buy a, a silver age um, graded you know key unless it's 4 or higher except for the you know for the except few you know you know the books I'm talking about um, let's see some great Green Lantern keys here first John Stewart you got some Hulk 180, 182, but not 181 in this auction. There was one in the last auction, if I'm not mistaken. This is not the Journey into Mystery 83. This is the Golden Records reprint. Um, otherwise, this a 6 I would have been some real pricey book. Let's see. It's a nice spec book right here, especially for the uh, Multiverse and Madness. This is Marvel Premiere 10 at an 8 which is a nice grade. Um... First, uh, Shumagorath, which is going to be one of the villains. And uh, a late minor key, Death of the Ancient One. Which I believe the Ancient One will be a appearing in the movie, if I'm not mistaken. Um, great book here, Marvel Spotlight 5, First Ghost Rider. This is, like I said, one of the few exceptions. Because it's such a big key for the Bronze Age that 6-5 would be acceptable for me. Scrolling down, we got some Deadpool, some Deathstroke, uh, first Constantine, some other you know Golden Age books here, Silver Street Comics. These are from the uh, early 40s, pretty scarce as well. Uh, let's see, got some Spawn. If you like Spawn, there's a lot of Spawn in this auction. So uh, if you're trying to fill out some books in the run. Uh, look at this auction as well. So really good, good uh, spawn keys. Um, let's see. So finishing up with some Star Wars. You got issue one in here. A couple of issues. Um, an early Strange Tales from Atlas. There you go. Some S Submariner. And of course some real early uh, Superman. From the 40s. This one's a, this is really beat up. It's a one out. Interested in seeing what these go for. I would love to have it real early. Superman. Um, this is actually a two out. Nice cover swipe. Early cover swipe. So I'll be looking at these just to see what they go for. A low grade TMT one. Second printing. Some more Golden Age books. Is a uh, First full him, later becomes Adam Warlock. Is a really low grade. Wow, Uncanny Tales number one. That's pretty cool. Um, a lower grade Werewolf by Night one and a First Moon Knight as well in a 4.0. Like I said, it's already at 400 bucks. Um, I'd expect this to go for probably hit the 1200 if not more. Uh, this is a obviously a hot hot book. This is not a book you see often. Wonder Woman number seven. Wow, that's the, the president uh, issue. This is a scarce book. This is going to be pricey. I can guarantee it. Not a book you see every day, and it's a war book. And some early X-Men to finish off the uh, comic lot. So, um, there you go. That's pretty much it for the comics. I'm just going to quickly go through the other stuff I'm not personally um, 
uh, Magic the Gathering collector, but there are some pretty uh, pretty big cards from what I gathered. Um, some of these were already pretty pricey. So if you if you like Magic the Gathering, um, they do they do you know put these up for auction on here as well. They do Pokemon, they do sports cards. So if that's something you're into, check that out as well. Um, just quickly going through these, and you you know feel free to go on the website and check it out as well. Um, let's see, I think I got five total pages, so uh, we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Hopefully, I didn't <laughs> bore you guys too much, but uh, I, I like to you know point these these auctions when they do come up. Because sometimes you can get these books or uh, cards or, you know, whatever they're selling on here for some really good prices. So um, I'll, I like to help out the community when uh, when I can with stuff like this. Especially if you're looking for, a, you know, a harder to find book or just, a, you know, a, a common key that you want to pay a little bit less. This, this site's pretty good. Some more uh, Magic the Gathering. Got some Pokemon here. Some uh, booster packs. People love to collect these uh, factory sealed, which usually go for, you'd be surprised, a lot of money. I've seen some of these go for over $20,000 for factory sealed boxes. Way more, too, depending on what it is. So, uh, yeah, I know. Surprised. <laughs> yeah, I still have um, my original Pokemon collection as well. I have to one day just send out some of the valuable ones and just get them graded. Because I kind of want to just get them out of my collection. And you got some, uh, you know, other booster boxes, some cards. And then you got some uh, figures. So you got some old stuff. Like if you like um, Transformers, uh, G.I. Joe, stuff like that. They put stuff on here too. It just depends on who's, you know, putting it up for sale. So you got some real early, 85 from Hasbro, Transformers, you know, still in the box. These are going to be, you know, surprised. They'll, they'll go for some good money, definitely. And I'll do some recaps on these as well. So you see these estimates here. I'm sure some of these are going to go for way, way more than that. It just depends on what specifically it is. And you got some toys, you know, some action figures. Um, and that's it so um, hopefully you guys enjoyed that feel free to hit the like if you do subscribe if you haven't already and until next time more expect the comics out